one thing that was absolutely lost in the sticker shock of $699 for the PlayStation 5 Pro was some of the other prices for Europe in addition to Japan. And that's what I want to talk about in this video because while it's pretty bad here in the US and in Canada, which it can be about $1,000 if you include the disk drive, which should be included in the system, Japan is probably the biggest and most interesting price for this. And it absolutely shows that Sony has completely given up on Japan and that the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to be DOA in that country. A country where Sony used to do incredibly well. Now, I want to talk about that and a number of other things. A little bit of a follow-up in the video that I had, some of the comments that I did read. But before we get into all that, what's good, everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first. And let's go ahead and jump right into this because I find this to be fascinating the playstation 5 pro in japan is going to be 119,980 yen that averages out to a staggering 841 us dollars and that's without the disk drive which should be included that's not an optional thing it should be included and the optional stand now sony has raised the price of the playstation 5 the base we're not even talking about the pro the base multiple times in four years they've had pretty much a price increase per a year on the system and while this is not new talking about this the fact that sony did shut down sony japan their first development studio it seemed like to me they were cutting off the potential lifeblood the start the beginning it's historic they're cutting that off they're severing the ties that i think that they felt was holding them back from greater things but it also seems like at this point with a game like astrobot made from team asobi that maybe you gave up a bit too quickly and if you look at what's going on right now look at the flop that was concord a hundred million dollars 200 million dollars you absolutely could have saved sony japan studios and given them a legitimate shot on the playstation 5 with that money let's just be real here a legitimate new ip from sony japan studios on playstation 5 a legitimate gravity rush or something along the lines of that would have absolutely been better than something like concord overall and yes i said it was a bad idea back then i said live service has been a bad idea back then i didn't like their plan and i wanted them to stick with sony japan so it's not like i have hindsight being 2020 here this is something that i've been saying for a number of years now and obviously it's proven to be true with how much of a success that astrobot is with some of the former staffers of sony japan studio and of course team asobi and it demolishing concord in sales very quickly now i do want to get to another thing here and i want to talk about how this kind of affects the overall shift because it's not just the playstation 5 pro the playstation 5 in japan but also the nintendo switch the market and the upcoming switch 2 now if you look at this here guys the seven year old nintendo switch is routinely outselling the PlayStation 5 despite not having a lot of the major RPGs that come out for the platform. Now, even if you look at the top 30 sellers, and this is all tying back into how PlayStation looks like it's going to be done in Japan, if you look at the top 30 sellers, most of them are Nintendo Switch games. So this pretty much further aids what I've been saying here. Now, Switch is already the best-selling platform of all time in Japan, and I think that that momentum is going to continue for the Nintendo Switch 2 as a hybrid platform. And if you look at the pricing here, 119,000 yen, the Switch 2 should probably be significantly cheaper than that. And I saw a lot of interesting things that people were saying online that Nintendo is going to come out and make a $300 Nintendo Switch 2, or that Nintendo should easily be able to price the system at that. And I'm thinking to myself, these people have no idea about the components in terms of manufacturing and pricing for what this is going to do heck if you look at something like steam deck for example the base level model of that is 399 dollars if you want an oled version that is 
$550. There's no way Nintendo's going to be able to price that for $300. But I do feel that the price will be below the PlayStation 5 disc version, which is $499, and the PlayStation 5 Pro, which is $699 without a disc drive. And with a disc drive, is going to be well over $800 if you include tax, which is just absolutely nuts in my opinion overall and if you look at what potentially we've been seeing rumored for the nintendo switch 2 i do believe that we are going to get a lot of these major rpgs like metaphor refantasio and potentially even elden ring and other games that are going to be on the nintendo switch 2 or announced pretty soon here within the next year or so now let's talk a little bit more about this optional disc drive thing because i think this really puts the nail in the coffin for the playstation 5 pro in japan for the rest of the world, for example, yes, I know, I'm very well aware that physical games are not as popular as they used to be, and a lot of people buy more digital, but just because a lot of people buy more digital, and this is one of the things that people kept on telling me as if I don't already know, just because more people buy digital doesn't mean a standard feature like a disk drive should be removed from a premium system. When I bought a PlayStation 4 Pro, that's a premium system. I think some people were still buying digital more then, even at that point, although physical was more prevalent, that doesn't mean that you remove it. Something like an ethernet port. More people use Wi-Fi than an ethernet port because they don't want wires running around their house and everything, yet they don't remove the ethernet port. It's not an optional thing on there. It should be included. An ethernet port should be included. A disk drive should be included. And the biggest thing here is that Sony has convinced people that a disk drive is a $100 difference or an $80 difference between the PlayStation 5 digital and the PlayStation 5 disc version, there's a $100 difference, and that's essentially just a trick. What they're trying to do is get more profits off you because they make more money off of digital sales. So they're able to subsidize that cost and say, yeah, it's $100 less for the same exact hardware, but we'll make that back off of you only being able to buy from us, which is very different from PC, which people are also trying to throw in there saying, oh, well, what about PCs? They cost this much. Well, PCs have multiple storefronts. PCs have free online play compared to $80 a month for PS Plus. PCs have multiple different controllers that you can use. PCs have mods and customization. PCs have so many different things to save you money here or there or in other places. There is no comparison overall to a closed device console where it's more restricted and closed down. So when people try to bring that up, I find that to be absolutely silly. But once again, the death nail here for it is that there's not going to be that disk drive in there that you have to tack on the extra price, which the system is already $841 converted out in Japan and now no disk drive where physical is still a big part in Japan. But overall, a lot of people when it comes to major games, the big stuff like for example, Monster Hunter and big games like Final Fantasy, those still have a very healthy split in Japan when it comes to physical game sales. A lot of people still like to buy those physical and not including that disk drive in this pro system pretty much kills any chance of people just saying, okay, let me just go in and get it so I can experience Final Fantasy VII Rebirth at its best or anything. I think it kills that with the price in addition to the gouging with the disk drive add-on. I'll also say this, having digital and physical and the option is overall better for both consumers. Even if you don't fully consume one or or the other or even if you're a hybrid and you do digital and physical games let me give you a perfect example of this on PSN right now at this point you can get Ratchet and Clank ripped apart get that for 70 bucks guess how much it is physical well it's $20 sometimes they've had sales as well on PSN where it was full price on physical so you want to be able to have that option and sometimes they even lower the price of the game to match what they see physical or vice versa to get the upper hand in competition overall so that's what you want you want the best prices for things you want there to be competition and when you have physical and digital it allows that instead of just letting sony route everything to psn and not have any type of competition for pricing at all on the games so i feel if you look at a number of these different things that we've discussed here it pretty much shows that sony is just saying yeah skip japan we're going to try to lose as little as possible charge as much as possible and make the economics work as we make money off the back end 
of raising the price of everything like for example ps plus in addition to the controllers they got a five dollar price increase stuff like concord flopping they have to make it up in various different places and they're looking to do that and squeeze every single last bit of savings they can out even if it is to the detriment of the consumer with a disk drive which should be included and I still have not seen any evidence that a disk drive costs $80 to $100 to manufacture and put into a system. That is a price markup that is a gouge to an nth degree. So like I said, I'm not trying to hear that because a disk drive should not be an optional thing. As this is a mid-gen premium refresh, which it should be superior to the before system in every single way which would include a disk drive in there which should include a disk drive in there for 700 i do feel that that price does cover that cost but sony is looking to make as much profit as possible even if it's going to be a number of dollars that they can do it by pushing that on to the consumer so it's just very disappointing overall but I think that if you factor in everything that we've talked about here, I mean, this system's pretty much done. And I feel that the Nintendo Switch 2 is essentially going to have a free reign in Japan when you start seeing stuff like Mario Kart and you start seeing Zelda, you start seeing some of these other bigger RPGs. I think that games like Monster Hunter are going to come over because these prices just aren't going to jive well with the Japanese market, with the inflation, with what's going on. It's just not happening because they're not happening right now with the PlayStation 5 as it's being outsold. So I don't see it happening with the playstation 5 pro which once again people aren't really talking about the japanese market in that type of way because most people are making content and seeing content from the western territories but i thought that i'd bring it up because it's very interesting in addition to addressing some of the things that i saw in my video that i did before so if you haven't seen that initial video talking about the playstation 5 pro make sure you check that one out but what do you guys think overall when it comes to the playstation 5 pro and what's going on in japan and of course in other places i mean I know Europe, the price is crazy. And also Canada, the price is crazy. A thousand dollars pretty much if you want that disk drive. It should be included in there. But it's just crazy how Sony is jacking up these prices. But I think one of the biggest things here that I also saw people talking about is that Sony's also preparing people for like that $800 next generation system or maybe even more. If a PlayStation 5 Pro without a disk drive is $700 with the disk drive is pretty much $800 plus then some how much are they going to charge for this next system so it's very interesting to see what sony's going to do next but i'll be honest here guys like yeah they don't have a ton of direct competition with like microsoft like they used to have but i'm telling you when you get really confident and arrogant with certain things i think nintendo's going to have a big push here with this next system so i absolutely think things could slow down for sony if they're not careful here with some of these pricings and what they're doing overall so we'll see what happens in the future so what are your thoughts overall guys let me know in the comment section below all right that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and check out my other videos right here on screen thanks for watching we'll catch you guys for the next one Peace.